Hello, my dear students. Welcome to my today's online class on the second part of modes of locomotion in the phylum Protozoa. In my previous class, I had taught you the pseudopodial locomotion in protozoans as exemplified by amoeba. You have to learn two more modes of locomotion that you normally see in protozoans. So, this is the quota for our class today. Modes of locomotion by cilia and flagella. Dear students, before listening to this video lecture, better you once revise my video lecture on locomotory organelle in phylum protozoa and make a note of detailed account of the structure of flagellum and cilia okay otherwise you may find it little difficult to follow what i am going to teach today okay let me introduce myself i am dr meera bk associate professor and head department of zoology Maharani Science College for Women, Palace Road, Bengaluru 1. You can see my cell phone number and mail ID on the slide. And after the class, any queries, you are most welcome to contact me. Okay, then. So you can see here one picture showing the flagellar mode of locomotion as exemplified by Euglena. And uh, one more picture, the mode ciliate mode of locomotion as exemplified by paramecium. This we are going to learn today, okay. The concepts are a bit complicated, try to follow it, okay. Now, the swimming locomotion in protozoans is caused by two locomotory organelle flagella and cilia okay flagella brings about the movement of some parasites in the body fluids of hosts for example trypanosoma there is a parasitic protozoan called trypanosoma which swims in the body fluids and there also the swimming movement is brought about by the flagellum and cilia are also involved and as the moment in this particular case is caused by beating of flagella and cilia especially in parasitic protozoans they are also known as andulipodia okay as the moment in this case is caused by beating of both flagella and cilia they are also called andulipodia right a hybrid name but in free swimming protozoans normally either flagella takes care of the locomotion or the cilia okay one more question please remember andulipodia there depending upon the structure involved in swimming movement you can have two types of movements, namely flagellar movement and ciliary movement. Okay, flagellar movement or ciliary movement. Okay, then now let us study the swimming movement or flagellar movement. A flagellum, please remember the picture of uh, Chlamydomonas or Euglena. The flagellum pushes the fluid medium that is the surrounding water at right angles to the surface of its attachment. So the water is moved at a 90 degrees of the beating of, uh, of the attachment of flagellum and the movement happens by bending. Okay. The bending movement of flagellum is made possible by sliding of microtubules past each other with the help of dynein arms. 
while teaching about the locomotory organelle that is while explaining the structure of the flagellum i had told you about 9 plus 2 arrangement doublets and uh, the doublet having the dianin arms right you please recall that point the bending moment of flagellum is made by the sliding of microtubules past each other with the help of dynein arms let's see how exactly it happens the dynein is a protein okay and these dynein arms show a complex cycle of moment with the energy provided by atp that is adenosine triphosphate these dynein arms attach to the outer microtubule of an adjacent doublet please note there are nine doublets right in the peripheral region and two singlets in the central region right so each doublet has a pair of dynein arms and these dynein arms attach to the other microtubule of an adjacent doublet and that does pull the neighboring doublet as the result the lab, the doublets slide past each other in opposite direction the doublets slide past each other in opposite direction you have to assume a little you should have some imagination here then these arms release and attach a little farther on the adjacent doublet and again pull the neighboring doublet right but please note the doublets of the flagellum are physically held in place like by the radial spokes right which connect the doublets with the central tubule right radial spokes and thus the doublets cannot slide much for much and their sliding is limited by radial spokes doublets don't hang freely they are held physically by radial spokes as a result their sliding action is bit limited right only they can bend that's all so instead the doublets can cause curve causing a bend the doublets can curve they can curve rather than freely move and this curve causes a bend in the flagellum causes a bend in this bend in the flagellum and this bending has an important role in the flagellar moment please note the doublets since their physical motion right is limited by radial spoke attachment they can just curve causing a bend in the flagellum and this bending has an important role in the flagellar moment okay so with this background let us see what are the different types of movements exhibited by flagella first moment is undulation moment you can see the diagram there are two types undulation from base to the tip and undulation from tip to the base in the first case undulation from the base to the tip causes pushing force okay and pushes the organism backwards the diagram is self explanatory please remember undulation from base to tip causes pushing force and pushes the organism backwards similarly undulation from tip to base undulation from tip to base causes pulling force pulling force and causes the organism to pull forward so base to tip backward motion of the body then tip to base pulling force and causes the organism to pull forward also when the flagellum bends okay to one side and shows wave like movement from base to tip the organism moves laterally in opposite direction okay when the flagellum bends to one side and shows wave like movement from base to tip the organism 
most laterally in opposite position. Finally, when the undulation is spiral, it causes rotation of the organism in the opposite direction and uh, this moment is called gyration. This moment is called gyration. Okay. Then. So, this is a very important point to note down. Then, the sideways lash moment is also seen. The flagellar moment of many organisms, you know, exhibit paddle like beat, paddle like beat or sideways lash consisting of two types of strokes, namely effective stroke and recovery stroke. Okay. So, the first one is the effective stroke and the second one is the recovery stroke and let us see what happens when. During effective stroke, the flagellum becomes rigid and starts bending against water. Okay. This beating in water at right angles to the longitudinal axis of the body causes the organism to move forward. On the other hand, during recovery stroke, the flagellum becomes comparatively soft. Let me put the photo here. The flagellum becomes comparatively soft and will be less resistant to the water. This helps the flagellum move backwards and then to its original place. So, the stroke is recovered. Once FFP stroke is brought about, it is always recovered through the recovery stroke. All right. Then, other than this, you see simple conical gyration moment. In this kind of moment, the flagellum turns like a screw, not to not the bending moment, it turns like a screw. This propelling action pulls the organism forward through the water with a spiral rotation around the axis of the moment and the organism gyrates on its own. Okay. So, this is all about the flagellar moment as exhibited by Euglena or Clamydomon ash. Now, we shall understand one more type of ciliary moment that is a swimming moment brought about by we shall understand one more type of swimming moment sorry brought about by cilia and this is known as ciliary moment okay just like flagellum the cilium also shows back and forth movements during the locomotion in my previous lecture i have also told you the differences between a flagellum and a cilium but structure wise they remain almost same right so the cilium also shows back and forth movements during locomotion these movements of the cilia they are also called effective stroke and recovery stroke okay respectively similar to what you see in flagellar movement then here i have given the ciliary moment effective stroke and recovery stroke right cilia moves just like a pendulum or a paddle the cilia moves the water parallel to the surface of its attachment like that of paddle stroke moment the moment of water is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the cilium okay and during the effective stroke, the cilium bends and beats against water, thus bringing body forward and sending the water backwards. Okay. It brings the body forward and sends the body uh, water backwards. Okay. This is effective stroke. Then what happens in recovery stroke? During recovery stroke, the cilium come back, comes back to original position by its backward movement without any resistance. Similar to the recovery stroke, what you see in flagella. Apart from this, 
Celia shows two types of coordinated rhythms, which I have to tell you. First one is synchronous rhythm, wherein the cilia beat simultaneously in a transverse row, as I have shown in the diagram. Okay. Then metachronous rhythm, wherein cilia beat one after another in a longitudinal row. So if they beat, sorry for the spelling, it is beat, B-E-A-T, not B-E-A-S-T, okay? Sorry for the typographical error. So synchronous rhythm is the case wherein cilia beat, not beast, beat simultaneously in a transfer, row, transverse row horizontally. Metachronous rhythm, wherein cilia beat one after the other in a longitudinal row, okay? The metachronal wave pass from anterior to the posterior end, what I have shown in the diagram. The beating of the cilia can be reversed to move backwards and a when a paramecium encounters an undesirable object in its path. Okay. Then, how this ciliary moment is coordinated? In flagella, the movement is coordinated by like muscle-like structures at the blepharoplast or basal granule and in cilia, ciliary movement is coordinated by infraciliary system, infraciliary system through neuromotor center called motarium present near the cytopharynx in the ciliates like paramecium. So if you happen to recall the diagram of a paramecium, on the ventral surface, in the middle region, you find the mouth and that is followed by cytopharynx, isn't it? So that is the place where motorium is present and that is the place where you find infraciliary system. This also I have told you when I have taught you the locomotory agonale, right? So this motorium is present near the cytopharynx in ciliates like paramecium. And this is the one which coordinates the ciliary moment. Okay. The infraciliary system together with motarium form what is known as neuromotor system. Okay. Neuromotor system and its main function is coordination of the beating of cilia. Ciliary movement is the fastest locomotion that you see in protozoans okay my dear students till now i have tried to brief the swimming movement in protozoans one by flagellum and the other by cilium thank you for your patient listening any questions you do can contact me till then stay blessed